Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ta'ala la sharika la. I bear witness there is no other God but God, and He has no partners. Uh, assalamu alaikum, everyone. So, uh, God willing, uh, today I would uh, like to uh, talk about uh, uh, two different topics. So, God willing, the first half of my sermon, um, I wanted to uh, go over um, some of the verses regarding the hereafter and um, what God tells us about the hereafter. Um, obviously, we understand that uh, the importance of uh, knowing and being certain about the hereafter is very important. And um, it's important for us to keep reminding ourselves of the Day of Judgment because uh, it is very important for us to have that solid belief, that solid, unshakable conviction that we're going to be held responsible for everything that we have done uh, in this world. Because if we don't, then obviously, you know, we end up becoming hypocrites or disbelievers uh, and just going through the motions thinking that we're doing good. But eventually, that's just the really back, the real backbone of our belief is that we have the belief in the unseen. You know, it's one of the prerequisites, uh, one of the requirements, main requirements for uh, making it to heaven. So if the belief in the hereafter is not there, uh, we don't fulfill the minimum requirements of salvation, which is uh, one of them being the belief in the hereafter, uh, the belief in the unseen. And so there's many, many verses. That's why we see over and over again, you know, God reminds us of the hereafter, you know, because he wants us to be mindful of that day and uh, be prepared for it. You know, if you, if you know that you have an exam coming up, for example, you know, you're going to study for it, you're going to study hard, or if you understand that one day, and so similarly, if you understand that one day you're going to be evaluated for all your actions in this world, you're going to make sure that every action that you're doing now is is uh, something that you will be proud of on the Day of Judgment, or something that you'll feel uh, satisfied with, you know. Uh, most people live in this world and they don't think about the hereafter, they're just living for uh, the present. And that belief obviously leads to people, uh, you know, being exiled from God. There's people that go to mosques and churches and places of worship, but, and they say with their lips that they believe in the hereafter. But in reality, the belief in the hereafter is not there because if the belief in the hereafter was there, uh, you know, this person uh, or those people would actually believe in God's revelation, and that would end up uh, in these people being guided by God. So uh, we can't stress enough on uh, how important it is for us to truly, truly, you know, look into our hearts and find out, uh, you know, how strong our belief is. You know, obviously, you know, God has given us uh, so many examples uh, based on which we can understand that, you know, it's something that is very very easy for God to do. You know, people can believe in so many things, so many things that are unimaginable, uh, uh, but we believe them, you know. And, um, but, you know, when, and scientifically speaking, for example, you know, if you tell people that, you know, a uh, scientist is able to clone you, for example, I mean, he's not going to have any issue uh, understanding that or believing that because it's based on uh, something that, you know, he can count on. But if you tell them about the hereafter and being resurrected, obviously, you know, people will have doubts. And uh, thank God for uh, allowing us to have the Quran's uh, mathematical, tangible, physical evidence that we don't have to deal with those kinds of doubts anymore because we have physical, tangible evidence that this is definitely, definitely going to happen and it's going to come to pass. So uh, for people, you know, who think that just in case there is here after, they're going to do good and they're going to make it, those people are not even going to make it because those people who truly understand that the hereafter is going to come to pass and are certain about it, only those people are going to be guided and those people are the ones who will work in accordance with that certainty that God gives to them, you know, and that certainty will obviously just doesn't come with just knowing about the hereafter. It also comes and is strengthened by us doing the actions, uh, doing the worship practices on a daily basis, remembering God 
and uh, we can do that to strengthen ourselves more. And so, I mean, when we think about the verses where God has described uh, these events, we understand that these are, um, I mean, uh, very dramatic, very catastrophic uh, events as far as this world is concerned. We understand that, you know, all the uh, people in this world, you know, a horn's going to be blown and all the people in this world are uh, going to die eventually. We understand that, you know, us having the jinns, for example, our jinns are going to live a few hundred years. So it's very likely that all of our jinns, you know, will be alive uh, to witness the these events, um, given the fact that they live for a few hundred years. So, you know, the horn will be blown and uh, all the creatures uh, will that are alive on this in this planet and in this universe are gonna pass out and uh, after that there'll be one angel who will be spared by God who is going to blow the horn uh, and then his the horn will be blown an, another time uh, so the first time the horn will be blown and all the people will uh, uh, you know all the souls will pass away uh, as far as this world is concerned, the ones that are alive. And then the second time when it's blown, they're all going to rise up again. And all the all the souls, God says, will be restored to the bodies. Uh, we, we understand that um, all the disbelievers will be, uh, you know, coming out of their graves in throngs, like uh, the example of moths. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the example of the believers that is given is, that of butterflies, nevertheless, they're all coming out of their uh, cocoons, you know, in a, in a way, uh, and the souls are being restored, you know, in their bodies. And so, if we think about it, this example, I mean, uh, when when the uh, caterpillar, you know, goes into uh, this mode of being uh, a cocoon, um, you know, he goes into this sleep, right, and then he comes out of it, you know, sheds it out and becomes and it becomes airborne. And so it's the same way, you know, our bodies, when they, when, when we pass away, it goes into a sleep and it sort of is going to get transformed by God. Now, we see that example, you know, there's cicadas, for example, we understand that come after every 13 years or 15 years, depending on the species, right, that they're from. And, and they can survive that long uh, in their uh, shells uh, under the earth with no oxygen whatsoever of any kind. And God shows us these examples so we understand that we have no doubt, you know. Similarly, when you think about the seeds and how God talks about, you know, us seeing the ground barren and there's no life, and then all of a sudden, you know, God allows, um, you know, the clouds uh, to be pushed through and, you know, it turns into precipitation. And then we see the seeds, you know, how they uh, hatch um, into, uh, germinate into uh, plants right? And uh, how God allows that system to function, right? And some of those seeds, you know, can survive for hundreds of years. Uh, and still, you know, once they get some water, uh, they can regerminate, you know, I mean, uh, scientists have recently, uh, you know, been able to uh, reactivate even like some uh, animal, I mean, not animals, uh, but like some living creatures like bacteria and stuff like that, that had been uh, in their fossils, uh, right, just by uh, introducing them to water. And so these are examples for us to learn from. And God gives us several verses in the Quran where God says, you know, look at these examples and how, you know, there's no life. And then God brings the water and all of a sudden uh, they are full of life. And we have several examples of, of that, you know, throughout the universe uh, and all over the earth, we can see life flourishing as a result of God's system that is flawless. And then, you know, God has allowed us to have uh, sleep. You know, we um, live and die every day. God says there's death and resurrection every day. You know, we believe when we go to sleep that we're going to wake up, right? But how we go to sleep and how we wake up, it's not in our control, right? Some people can go to sleep and never wake up. Uh, some people die in their sleep, right? But then others, as God says, are allowed to continue. You know, what causes that whole process? I mean, just we see, you know, we go to sleep sometimes five hours, six hours, eight hours 
passed by and we don't even realize what was going on during that time. And, uh, and we have the example, obviously, of the sleepers, the seven sleepers, uh, and all that is mathematically proven. So there's nothing that should prevent us, especially us as submitters, uh, from having any sort of doubt, uh, uh, from uh, t nothing that should uh, allow us to have any sort of doubt, right? And uh, we should have full certainty uh, in God's revelations. You know, if we just go through the entire uh, mathematical uh, structure of the Quran, I mean, just the, I mean, and when I talk about go through the entire mathematical structure, I mean, just the basics. If you just go through the basics, you know, and you look at just the facts uh, at, at its surface, you know, that should be enough uh, for us to be convinced that this is the word of God and we understand that we're going to be resurrected. And so what does God say? You know, there's several verses where uh, God has talked about the events in the hereafter. And God willing, I will read some of them. So um, uh, it says, And your Lord comes together with the angels in row after row. The day will come when the Spirit and the angels will stand in a row. None will speak except those permitted by the Most Gracious. And they will utter only what is right. The angels will be all around, and your Lord's dominion will then encompass eight universes. And we understand that the eighth universe being the hell that will be created on that day. And so God says, O you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire whose fuel is people and rocks. Guarding it are stern and powerful angels who never disobey God. They do whatever they are commanded to do. And 39.75 says, you will see the angels floating around the throne, glorifying and praising their Lord. After the equitable judgment is issued to all, it will be proclaimed, Praise be to God, Lord of the universe. And so it says, On that day when he summons them all, he will say to the angels, Do these people worship you? And obviously, you know, all the uh, idol worshippers and all of those people will be questioned. You know, as far as God is concerned, all of that has already happened. So we have details of that in several verses in the Quran. Uh, and God says that the heaven will break apart into masses of clouds and the angels will descend in multitudes. And uh, so, you know, the, and God says about the believers, it says the great horror will not worry them and the angels will receive them joyfully. This is your day that has been promised to you. This, the second really important thing for us to remember is the eternity of the hereafter, right? I mean, in all the belief systems that are being mass preached by Satan, uh, Satan wants people to believe that the hereafter is not eternal, so that you know people can do whatever they want and then just basically motivate them to continue to sin so that they don't worry about the consequences like it's temporary. So they think that, okay, even if we commit sins, after some time, you know, we will be forgiven. But God says, you know, until the camel passes through the needle's eye, you know, these people will not enter heaven. The people who are destined for hell will go to hell and they'll live there for eternity. And same for the believers, they'll live for eternity. And uh, I never forget this one person, you know, this hypocrite, um, who came up <laughs> with this idea that he says, okay, he says, he literally said that, and he was serious. He said, okay, so for God, he said, everything is possible, so God will create a camel that is so small that he will pass through the needle's eye. <laughs> and then all these people will go to heaven. <laughs> so we know that, you know, it's a, it's a figure of speech that says, like I, I, like I tell you, you know, you're not going to get it until the cows fly. You know, and then you say, okay, well, God is going to create cows on that day that are also going to fly. <laughs> so we understand that these are lies that, you know, Satan promises people so that they can continue to blunder. But we understand that the eternity. I mean, recently, I, re I was really surprised when I recently heard this thought. I don't know if you, any of you noticed that, but uh, it was suggested that, uh, you know, like there is uh, another, another, some kind of plan that is going to be available, like, after this world, you know, uh, like, and we understand, like, 
something else is going to happen, you know, and we understand that God talks about the eternity of, of heaven. So if you're, if you're, if you pass your test and you go into heaven, you know, all the bad souls, all the bad creatures that have rebelled against God, they're already, all of them are already going to be suffering and they're all piled up at that time. So at that time, there's no reason for God to have another plan where you have another sort of uh, 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 fight between good and evil and then some other thing is going to spawn out of that, you know. But we understand that, you know, God says, no, this heaven and hell is eternal. People who go to heaven, uh, they will be there forever. They will enjoy gardens and springs, uh, fruits, spouses, everything that we need, anything that you imagine, you know, you're going to get more than that in the hereafter. So this is, and this is God's promise. We understand that this is God telling us, you know, and, and God never breaks His promise. And we have mathematical, physical, tangible <laughs> confirmation from God that all of these events are going to happen, you know. So this is a real, true blessing from God, you know, because I remember before before I became a submitter, um, I, I would think about the hereafter because, and I never read the Quran because, before, because um, you know, I didn't have a, didn't tra get a translation or anything, you know, but just what I, everything that I heard from my parents and everywhere else growing up, knowing that the hereafter is there. And so I'd, I'd be thinking about it, but it wasn't until I read the mathematical uh, miracle, read about the mathematical miracle of the Quran that I actually believed that, yes, it's now I know 100% that it's going to happen. And that in itself was something that I believe will change, uh, you know, one's life uh, for good if they truly believe. Uh, and for me personally, like, I remember the only thing I kept thinking about was the hereafter. You know, all these events, I was like, oh my God, like, really, I couldn't wrap my head around, like, all of those things that God says, you know. My God, I mean, they're going to happen. Like, this is, you know, pretty extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily great that, you know, uh, believers will have something like that, but on the other hand, also knowing that you know all the uh, on the flip side for the things that are hap going to happen for the disbelievers, you know all those events that they're going to witness. As God says, like you know, people will be staggering because they will be so shocked. You know, a mother, uh, w w pregnant woman will abort her fetus. You know, I mean, uh, infant will be gray haired. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's. I mean, we understand that these are very allegorical, but uh, this can help us uh, imagine the, the magnitude of how people will be in so much shock uh, that is unlike anything, you know, we've ever seen. Um, and uh, one of the things uh, that was interesting for me recently, we had this discussion about the, allegor uh, the allegorical description of heaven and hell. And the messenger of the covenant talking about how the descriptions are allegorical and the fact that, you know, the fire as we know it in the hereafter will not be a literal fire of anything. He said there will be darkness, right? Because uh, many verses in the Quran also talk about that, you know, where the uh, hypocrites will ask the believers to give them some of their light and they'll say, they'll, we were with you, were we not with you? And they'll say, yes, but uh, you cheated your souls, hesitated and doubted and became misled by wishful thinking, so go back behind you and seek light. But a barrier will be separate, set between them where you know, they will not be able to uh, cross over. And, um, and so we understand that this is everything that separates a believer from a disbeliever. You know, once we're able to overcome that hurdle and truly understand and, and, and fix our belief in the hereafter, you know, that's our foundation. And then once you have a solid foundation, then everything else builds up from there. But if you don't have a foundation and you're doing all these things and, you know, obviously, you know, it's going to pull you back. So this is why God reminds us over and over and over again on the events. And also God reminds us, um, you know, looking at all the injustice that we see in this world, you know, people looking as if they're getting away with things murder, corruption, uh, injustice of any kind, you know, uh, horrible uh, people just living free, uh, it seems that they, they can get away with things, right? Mm -hmm. But we understand that God's system is so perfect that every, every single one of us is being recorded from birth 
till the end of our lifetime. We have our companions recording everything. So nothing is being ignored. You know, our own souls, our own bodies, our jinns are witnessing, you know, so there's plenty of witnesses. <laughs> you know, everything is being watched. And so we we, we can I mean for a for a, I think for for a believer this should be a comforting thought to un, to know that God sees everything and to know that all the good things they're going to do are not going to go in vain everything is going to be counted for God says you know even a mustard tiny even something as small as a mustard seed will be accounted for you know and God says you know every step you take any thirst you suffer you know any thing you do to enrage the disbelievers every step you take every valley you cross you know everything is has a value. Everything has a, has a price that is accounted for. Has points. You know, if you look at it in terms of points, you know, there's points for everything, and nothing is being ignored. So it's a great system. You know, God's system, and and it's beautiful because you know God is so forgiving and generous and kind, and He wants us to get more points. You know, if you if you mess up, you know, you you get you get one point minus, right? If you do good, you get ten points. You know. So it's an amazing system, but still people manage to fail, you know, because people abuse God's forgiveness um, and God's generosity. But God is most gracious, most merciful, uh, and we understand how much He is uh, gracious and merciful. You know, God says people, even if they have, uh, you know, committed a whole life of sin and crime, I mean, once they're able to come to a realization that they were on the wrong path and they truly believe, God will allow them you know, to, and they re repent and reform, obviously, you know, God would wipe away all of their sins. And not only that, He would convert them into credits, right? And so who does that? We understand that nobody can do that, just God. So SubhanAllah, I mean, all these things are there for us to remember and to remind us that uh, we have to be mindful of this day. And God willing, uh, all of us can, uh, you know, one day, and be successful and reap the benefits for our souls. So uh, with that, God willing, let's uh, repent to Bulala. Alhamdulillah. Uh, praise be to God. I bear witness there is no other God but God and He has no partners. Uh, so for the second part of my sermon, uh, I wanted to focus on something different um, and uh, talk about uh, God's blessings. You know, So we understand that uh, for a believer it's very important to be appreciative. You know, There's always before we try to complain, we should remember there must be something that we can be appreciative for to God, you know. Uh, before you complain about, let's say, um, you know, your work or something, you know, thank God that you have work, right? Because there's someone who doesn't. Um, and uh, this is just an example, but, you know, we have so many examples of God's blessings and it's important for us to think and appreciate all those blessings, right? So obviously there's so many blessings that you can't, God says you can't possibly encompass them. There's so many blessings and obviously we cannot fathom those blessings, you know, I mean, just uh, like, you know, imagine, you know, sitting in your room, I mean, when do you, how often do you think about the perfect temperature in your room, you know? I mean, thank God we're living in California and we, we can thank God every day just for being here you know, not even being outside, I mean, you go outside and, you know, it's still perfect temperature, you know. So we forget. And, um, you know, we can, we can, we we get bogged down with like, small things here and there and we start complaining about them. But there's so many, so many blessings. And so one of the blessings that God has uh, talked about in, in the Quran also is sleep, you know. And uh, thank God for sleep because people who, who are sleep deprived, they can truly understand and appreciate the value when they are not when, not when they're not getting the sleep, right? If people don't sleep for a few days, they'll go crazy. Literally, you'll start hearing voices and so many things. You know, they recently, not recently, but uh, you know, I was watching this documentary where they were uh, creating some drugs in Russia, I believe. You know, and they were doing some experiments on people, 
And after they started taking those drugs, they were not sleeping, right? And I think that was the idea. They wanted them to not sleep so they can work more and be aware, like, uh, you know, combat and stuff. And so these and it worked, like these people stopped sleeping, but then uh, after like a couple of days, they became addicted and then they started, uh, you know, hearing things and then they started eating their flesh and just, I mean, it goes crazy, right? It's very disturbing. So, I mean, God has made this for us, for us to appreciate that, right? I mean, uh, imagine having a hard day uh, full of uh, stress, you know, and then you go to sleep, have a good night's sleep, and then you wake up rejuvenated, right? And we could thank God for that. When you get up, you could thank God that, thank God you allowed me to sleep. Now I'm refreshed, ready to, you know, take on another day, mashallah, or, or, or thanking God for the day that, uh, you know, you have another day for yourself to, to work for your hereafter, do better than yesterday. Uh, God says in 660, uh, death and resurrection every day. He's the one who puts you to death during the night and knows even the smallest of your actions during the day. He resurrects you every morning uh, until your lifespan is fulfilled. Then to him is your ultimate return. He will then inform you of everything you had done. Uh, 3023 says, among his proofs is your sleeping during the night or the day and you're working in pursuit of his provisions. In this there are sufficient proofs for people who can hear. And 39.42 says, God puts the souls to death when the end of their life comes, and also at the time of sleep. He thus takes some back during their sleep, while others are allowed to continue living until the end of their predetermined interim. This should provide lessons for people who reflect. So, again, we, as we see, God says this should provide lessons for people who reflect. And the other verse says, in this there are sufficient proofs for people who can hear. So, you know, how are these things proofs, you know, and we can see that the absence of sleep, what it would do to a person. Uh, so when you miss your sleep, for example, in order to keep up with your world, you, you pay the price with your ability to learn, with your health, uh, with your safety and your quality of life. Uh, uh, so we have so many uh, demands on our time, obviously, you know, you have jobs, family, errands, uh, and not to mention finding some time to relax. So. Uh, to fit um, everything in, we often sacrifice sleep, right? But sleep affects our mental and physical health. The sleep is linked to a uh, cold and flu. So, for example, you know, uh, when, you're sleep, when you're sleep deprived uh, and you're uh, worn down, you know, that's when you're, the clue that your body is vulnerable to infection, you know. So it's important uh, for our immune system, you know, obviously God gives us that time to uh, rejuvenate and uh, you know bring our uh, uh, body you know in the in the right uh, strength so we can fight these diseases and then also heart diseases you know people who uh, don't get enough sleep you know often get prone to things like heart diseases obviously we understand that it's uh, linked with the brain function mental health of the, of a person if you're chronically sleep deprived you may think you're still driving safely and performing well at your job, but you're probably wrong. Studies have found that people who aren't getting enough sleep uh, just as unsafely as someone who's drunk. So we also know that people who are sleep deprived have very poor judgment when evaluating their own performance. They think they're doing well on memory, on eye coordination, tests, but they're not. The memory is also slightly degraded when you're sleep deprived and gets worse the more deprivation you have. Also, uh, there's link to obesity. You know, when people don't sleep, uh, uh, people think, uh, people don't realize that, uh, you know, not getting enough sleep can actually make people uh, gain weight. Um, so, uh, st several studies over the past decade or so have studied the relationship between sleep deprivation and obesity. And uh, they found that, you know, people, uh, uh, that lack of sleep was a bigger contributor to childhood obesity than any other factor, right? Um, and so this is important for the parents to, to make sure that their children get enough sleep, you know. Um, this is for you, Sami, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows exactly why this might be, but some research pointed out to hormonal imbalances 
uh, as the culprits. For example, lack of sleep has been linked to lower levels of hormone leptin, which reduces hunger. And um, so, you know, when people, and that's why you notice that, you know, when you uh, get less sleep, or if you awake later till night, you, you get more hungry and you eat more, you know? So it makes you more hungry. So when we sleep, it allows our, you know, that uh, feeling of hunger to be suppressed. Uh, uh, God says in the Quran in 78, verse 9, we created sleep so you can rest. We made the night a cover and the day to seek provisions. So we all know the f wonderful feeling when our head sinks into the pillow after a long, productive day. We rest so uh, we can wake up in the next morning being refreshed and rejuvenated. However, sleeping in darkness is essentially vital to our health. You know, when you uh, get that time between uh, 10 p.m. to like uh, 2 a.m., you know, that's the time when your body is uh, able to create melatonin, which is an important chemical for you to uh, allow yourself to experience the deep sleep, right? It, even if there's a little bit of light uh, that's coming in, you know, that disrupts the flow of melatonin. So if you don't get that time, for sleep, you know, obviously you're going to be more tired, you're going to have less uh, time for your deep sleep, um, which, or I think which is also called the REM sleep. And uh, so these are all, you know, blessings from God. I mean, this is obviously just, you know, scratching the surface merely on one of the things that God has given us, right? And we take these things for granted every single day. And we can see, like, for example, people who have, for whatever reason, they're not able to sleep, they can really, un they will, I, I mean, I'm sure if anybody stop sleeping suddenly all of a sudden he will he would want to shell as much money as he has if he can get that quality of life back right if someone's not able to sleep they're gonna go crazy in a couple of days <laughs> you know so may god uh, you know allow us to appreciate these things right uh, we often uh, like i said you know we often forget about these things like you know, you have one or two problems in your life and you start complaining and complaining, right? And then, you know, what happens is you get one problem and you're complaining and you're not being appreciative, but you're going to get another problem after that. You're going to have two problems. Now you start complaining about them, then you're going to get a third one because you're, you're just complaining, right? And then you're going to have so many problems, you're not going to know which one you need to complain about now, you know? So you're just going to be a complainer, right? But, uh, but for, that's why for us it's important you know, and we have the example in the Quran also, you know, when God says about these people who, uh, you know, uh, got one misery after the another, so they stop agonizing over hardship, right? So they got one after another. It's just, so don't agonize over the problems, you know. In fact, uh, on the other hand, we should be thankful and appreciative. You know, if something happens, you know, just remember that this could be a test from God, you know, if you look around if you've done something, you know, try to figure it out. If you can't think of anything, just implore God to help you, you know, rather than, uh, you know, feeling sad or depressed or complaining in any, any way. That never helps anybody, and right, especially being a submitter, that doesn't help. And Satan wants us to be that way, but God promises us happiness, and he has the roadmap for us that God says, as God says in the Quran, you know, anything that troubles us, anything that bothers us, you know, God has a solution for us. And the solution is for you to be appreciative, appreciative of the blessings and, uh, you know, imploring him for anything you want. You know, there's nothing wrong with imploring God, whether it's your job, your health, money, anything, you know, but imploring God itself is a form of worship. So, but obviously complaining is not going to get us anywhere if you're complaining or being sad. Um, uh, obviously, you know, that hurts us very much. Uh, and obviously, you know, pulls us back from achieving our final goal, which is, uh, you know, pleasing God and making it in the hereafter. Obviously, we get distracted. And that's what Satan wants. He wants us to get in that mode. Obviously, then people, and we understand that when this happens, you know, the difference between a believer and a disbeliever is that a believer is steadfast and he's patient, he perseveres. And on the other hand, the disbeliever, he becomes... Uh, uh, he falls in despair and he falls into disbelief and obviously God wants us to never ever despair you know no matter how difficult the situa situation looks we see from the Quran that people who were in circumstances that looked literally impossible you know that that there was any hope right you know we hold on to hope as long as we can see hope when we don't see hope we lose it right but but there were people that 
they were in circumstances where literally you couldn't see there was no hope like it was physically impossible for example we have the examples of uh, uh, you know uh, John uh, you know how he was born his father was uh, old you know his wife was sterile and God allowed it to happen you know so we have so many examples similar examples where it looks impossible I mean look at the life of Jacob for example right he lost one son then he lost another son and after many years he's never found them and you know, any other XYZ person uh, you know would most likely uh, at that at some point lose hope and think they both died right but he was hopeful he was and he had uh, assurance from God as a result you know he never despaired and that's the lesson that we learned when he said uh, that you know he sends us Joseph he said uh, you know none despairs of the Lord's mercy except the disbelievers right so we have to be always hopeful and you know uh, and this naturally will uplift your 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 behavior and your outlook on life but on the other hand obviously you're going to get credit at God which is as you know you can't put a price on it so um, you know we, let's ask God to help us you know when we are it's easy to um, you know think about it and discuss them now but you know the test the real test is when you're in the moment you know when you are in that situation to remember that uh, so that we can pass all our tests and we can be proven as uh, God's worshipers under all circumstances, uh, both good and bad. So with this, uh, uh, let's uh, pray. Akim Salah.